Next on the agenda, then we have a bill that actually uh, came from this committee. Also, over the summer, we've been working on this. Senate Bill Number 628, Creating Healthy Children and Healthy Communities Act. Council, if you please come forward and explain the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The bill that was introduced repealed the Complete Streets Act and created the Healthy Children and Healthy Communities Act under the Bureau for Public Health. It incorporated a mandatory version of Complete Streets, which was opposed in the past because it was cost prohibitive to require studies on every highway project, uh, you know, regardless of its size and nature. So. Um, I took that out as, as part of the committee substitute. We'll talk about that in a minute. The uh, introduced bill requires the Bureau for Public Health to work with highways and municipalities <laughs> to implement the um, portions of Complete Street that were retained and to work toward building alliances and creating <coughs> healthy communities. There was also in the introduced bill a requirement that various governmental entities work together to investigate the options for using public buildings and spaces for healthy community activities. The title was defective and uh, its second reference to the Committee on Health. Uh, there is a proposed committee substitute. As you know, Mr. Chairman, at your direction, I have prepared that. The proposed committee substitute removes the complete street portions of the bill and leaves the current uh, Complete Streets Act under the Department of Highways. Uh, it is not mandatory, but it is permissive and allows, uh, currently allows highways to look at these projects with an eye toward making them more accessible for bicyclists and uh, motorcycles and uh, runners and those kinds of things. So that is still intact. The committee substitute uh, includes definitions for healthy communities, physical activity, and physical education. The Bureau for Public Health is given the authority and may facilitate uh, public initiatives and public-private partnerships that will help communities develop these healthy lifestyles uh, programs. The Bureau may consult with the municipalities and the Division of Highways when community planning, transportation, highways, land use, those kinds of things are up for discussion. But the Bureau has to be invited in. We did not make that a mandatory requirement. Uh, at the time they are invited in, the Bureau may assist in developing and promoting healthy communities. And there are some resources listed, like the CDC and other agencies. There are programs out there that are working diligently to promote healthy lifestyles, healthy communities, physical activity for children, and being able to use uh, public places to assist kids in developing these healthy lifestyles, to want to be active, to want to go out and play and do those things that um, many of us from a, another generation took for granted. The, um, Municipalities, Division of Highways, and the Bureau are to look at the feasibility of collaborative agreements to provide for the use of available public facilities in the uh, community to promote physical activity and, where possible, physical education. Uh, as you may remember from discussions this <laughs> summer, physical activity is something you can do on your own. Whether you're jumping rope or taking the stairs, it's something that increases your heart rate and makes you breathe a little harder to be moderate to vigorous physical activity. Physical education requires you have an instructor. So if it's a program through the Y or third base or in the school system where you have someone teaching you something, whether it's a sport or jazzercise, that's physical education. So it's looking at these alternative uses, whether it's the basement rec room in the public library or in the schools, how can we open these facilities and encourage the communities to use them? There's a list of things in the bill that have to be considered, including the liability 
issue and how you would defray costs if you had to have insurance and those kinds of things. So after these public entities look at this possibility, they're going to report back to the legislature and let us know if it's feasible to do some of these things and how that can be accomplished. Uh, and then finally, after the report is made to the legislature, the uh, local entities can undertake any of these initiatives without further legislative action that they choose to take because we certainly don't control the use of their local public facilities. <coughs> Questions for council? Um, I know this has been talked about informally before we see all the empty school buildings and mm -hmm. I think, wow, you know, they could be used. And then you all, then you talk to the boards and so forth and find all the obstacles that you've listed in this bill. I'm just interested to see how at the end it says on the last page five, the governmental entities may take any action contained in the reports but there will be costs, so how, how do you anticipate the revenue for those costs? Because it, it's one thing to say, yeah, these bills are going to be used, here's the cost, here's the liability, we've got to, you know, here's the staffing, and blah, 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 you know, it's a lot of cost here. Right. So what is, the, how does the bill, other than just a general statement about how the costs are mitigated, what is this, um, what authority is there for somebody to take action? I mean, you say well, that as budgets and which group of governmental entities, there's three or four of them that does it. Well, and we left it open because um, it's not going to really be Department of Highways. If, there, if Highways is in there, it's because they're working with the municipality on upgrades, so we can put that aside. But say, for example, the public library or the local school. We have heard testimony from uh, other groups and counties that are doing some of these things, and they have worked out a way to uh, overcome those obstacles either through grants or private funding, those kinds of things. So we've left those possibilities for assistance open to let them work out what's best for their community. Is, is, there, is, is there a reason for this enactment? Is there an impediment to doing this now or can communities just do this now or is this adding just a, an extra or adding sort of a, kind of a study resolution Thing where we're going to go out, gather the information, come back, report to government finance, see the budgeted cost. Or can these things be done? Now? Well, these are on the local level, so I'm not sure that it would be a budgeted cost for state funds. No, I'm talking about they, they would have to come up. They would have to come up with it, but there are programs, for example, through CDC, and they offer uh, financial as well as other resources to get these healthy communities started, to, to look at the communities and see what's available. Uh, I believe we have representatives from the Bureau for Public Health in the audience, and they tell me that they're, they're doing some of these initiatives now, but a lot of the time, a bill like this just gives somebody that impetus, or they say, oh, I didn't know we could do that. Let's, let's put this together. So it outlines what can be done now, but it's in statute, so that it gives a little bit of... Right. And then okay. when they come back of the report, if it requires further action on the part of the legislature, then they will make those recommendations. Yeah, I hear that. Well, uh, but it doesn't mean that things cannot be done right now. Some things can be done right now. Some things they may need some assistance with. Senator, one thing I'm just on legal and council can correct me, but of course, uh, in order to for local communities or local entities or government agencies, uh, they're not able to do legally. They're not able to do something unless we authorize them to be able to do it. Uh, although they've been doing these public-private partnerships, and I, I think of Bingo County has been a, a prime example where the whole community has been involved. They really don't have the cover of the law to cover that what they're doing. 
there, this gives them the authority and the flexibility to do this, but also gives them the permission, and it's, a, it's permissive, it's not right. mandatory, but gives them the, the law in order to be able to do those things, but also allow other communities to look at this as an opportunity to do things like this as well, where it's a, a community involvement. So that, that's where the authority is important <coughs> to lay this in the code so they, they can point to this as we've been authorized to be able to do this. Why not, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind? Sure. I know that in Mason County where I have some familiarity because of my spouse working there for years and being a building super administrator for years, the end of the building would close at three and that was you know sometimes there'd be a little pickup basketball or whatever or organized basketball, but there 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 seemed to be so much uh, organizational energy expended just to run the regular school day that to layer over uh, that evening thing would require, you know, other people coming in. I mean, so that, it, and there is some cost here, there's no question. I mean, if somebody comes in and is playing ball and bangs their head on something in the corner and injures themselves, there's litigation and liability. All of a sudden, this becomes overwhelming given how RIM covers this and RIM covers that. So, but I'm all for looking at it. I think it is sad these buildings are not available tonight. It's just, it's, it's, and that's why I was just kind of trying to figure out what the bill was really doing to see if it reaches the goal. And it, 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 it opens a discussion. So, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll come back with more suggestions. Yeah. So, since yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I was just looking at the shalls and the maze in there and trying to figure out what was permissive and what shall be done. And I, I think having listened to the conversation, I know where the maze are and where the shalls are. Right. Um, I do, you know, note and, and worry that, uh, you know, when these buildings are not open frequently, I think the, the first answer is due to liability right. concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet, this we don't really deal with liability or limiting the liability in this. Uh, we do look at it specifically, uh, and, and again, I think that's going to be something that we come back here in two, one year or two years, and have to address, right. Mr. Chairman, because uh, I really think that uh, if it wasn't for what seemingly out in the real world was a litigious society that we live in. That, that we wouldn't be having this meeting. We would be already using all this uh, after hours, et cetera. So uh, I guess, uh, you know, at least we are with the bottom of page four, the anticipated liabilities and insurance costs associated with opening schools and other public facilities to community use. So I, I really, I guess that would be highlighted in my mind that, uh, that that's what we're going to have to look at when we come back here. And I'm guessing that there will be some future legislation here. And there's a difference in the liability, like Laidley Field is open and you can run the track in the evenings, as opposed to the school building. I mean, there's a huge difference in what is going to be required to have those two facilities available. So it's going to take a little investigation on the part of local folks. And I guess a little bit of what, you know, whether you could sign a waiver, whether those waivers were right. meant to be. Right. I'm going to sign this thing, I'm going to come in here and play ball if I sprain my ankle. So, you know, I'm, right. I'm going to take care of it myself as right. opposed to wanting to sue someone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Edgerton. And many of these schools now on Saturdays, they have basketball games in them. And so there must be some waiters that are signed there. Yeah. And uh, they, they call them grasshopper basketball. Mm -hmm. where I'm from. <laughs> and uh, there, there's all kinds of leagues like that. And they have musicals, plays, and things like that. And there's a short that individual groups and communities are finding ways to make these exactly. things work. Exactly. Yeah. This, uh, and this, I think this will encourage more to vote in. Thank you. Senator Miller, Jeff. Yes, thank you, Jim. Um, did we consult one of our, one of the groups who we were very supportive of the Children of Poverty Select Committee have been AARP, and they were very strong supporters of the streets. Mm -hmm. Have we talked to them about what we're doing? No, because they weren't included in this once we moved these, this around. They are still a representative on the advisory board for Complete Streets. Okay. Uh, the other question I have on page three, it says, uh, 
may have consulted at the time of the planning. Why is that may and not a shall? Because they have to be invited in. The Department, of, the Division of Highways is not going to look at these criteria for every project. So when a project is selected, then they will consult with the Bureau for Public Health on how to make these other options more readily available, like in St. Albans with that uh, bike lane. Okay, and I guess I just missed it because it talks about the design of the community may consult. I think if we make that a shell from a drafting point, we would have to put, uh, pull in for municipalities, a new section for the municipal code and a section for the division of highways if you wanted to make all this mandatory. It's just consulting. Right. All right, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Layer. <coughs> I know one particular program I'm not really familiar with Trails mm -hmm. programs. Is that within the Division of Highways? So this language in here bring that uh, potential into the discussion? That would be a consideration, any transportation issue. But specifically, uh, rails to trails is within the Division of mm -hmm. Highways. Okay. Thank you. Further questions, Council? Well, let's go ahead and get the bill before us. Uh, Sir, I just to recognize for a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do so. Now, you heard the motion on Senate Bill 628 is now before us. Uh, amendments of any substitute, Senator Adler. Okay, now I'll move any substitute for 628. Uh, Senate Bill 628. Uh, I, 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 first, the referral. Heard the motion. Any uh, questions or amendments to that uh, committee substitute that's now before us? Any questions or amendments? Okay, if not, all those in favor of the motion of adopting committee substitute for Senate Bill 628 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Here's the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. Now we have a committee substitute for Senate Bill 628 before us. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Not uh, all those in favor of the passage of committee substitute for Senate Bill 628. Outward recommendation do pass under the double committee reference. It be referred to the committee on health. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Here's the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 628 passes out with the recommendation that do pass. Okay. I um, just want to mention uh, Senator. Edgel provided us uh, a letter in your packet uh, where uh, a person had written him and he wanted to share that with us. If you would please note that. And we will be starting our, after the session, we will be starting to go out on the road again. Uh, if you have any suggestions of where we should be going to visit, I know we have some locations. Uh, Greenbrier County has invited us uh, to come there, and, and also I know up in Hampshire County, we have an invite, Senator Cookman, up that area. So if you do, please talk to the staff, because as soon as session's over, we'll start uh, developing that list so we can get back out into the public and, and listen to that, because these are the ideas that we've received from them <coughs> that we've been acting on, and I think it's important for us to keep that. I think even in the Northern Panhandle, we've been invited by Senator Edgel uh, to come up there as well. So we're looking at doing that uh, this coming year. Any other business come before the committee? If not, Senator Edgel is recognized for a motion. I'll move we adjourn. Heard the motion to, to adjourn. All those in favor, sit up by saying aye. Aye. Those no, here's the ayes. The ayes do have it. We are adjourned. <laughs>